Hi everyone, um, I'm going to talk today about some of the evidence regarding saturated fat, uh, sorry, polyunsaturated fat and coronary heart disease. So the reason I think this is an important topic is because it actually underlies a fair bit of conventional dietary advice. It provides the basis to recommend low-fat dairy and lean meats. It is one of the major deterrents that people use to put people off a low-carbohydrate diet can lead to an emphasis on plant foods over animal foods. And more recently, in the new USDA dietary guidelines, vegetable oils are now a food group. So what's the evidence for this? Well, I'm going to use the American Heart Association's new presidential advisory as a bit of a reference for this talk, because it is quite recent, being only published a few months ago, and is a bit of a consensus report that's going to be used to drive a lot of public health policy and dietary guidelines. So the presidential advisory relies on three main lines of evidence. The first is how fats affect cholesterol levels. The second is observational studies. And the third is randomized controlled trials. So we're probably all familiar that saturated fat increases LDL cholesterol and polyunsaturated fat decreases cholesterol. And since most studies find that LDL cholesterol is associated with an increased risk of coronary heart disease, therefore you could draw a reasonable hypothesis that if you reduce saturated fat and increase polyunsaturated fat, you would reduce LDL cholesterol, and you can hypothesize that this would lead to a reduction in coronary heart disease. This essentially is the diet heart hypothesis that many of you might have heard of. And so long as both links in that chain of evidence hold, it's a reasonable hypothesis, but it needs to be tested. Now you could argue, saturated fat also increases HDL cholesterol, and as a result, doesn't affect the total to HDL ratio. That being said, I'm not going to touch on this too much because the American Heart Association didn't, but the point still stands that since polyunsaturated fat reduces the total to HDL ratio, the diet, heart, the diet heart hypothesis is still largely the same regardless. So moving on to observational studies. So there's a large number of observational studies that have measured how much saturated fat and polyunsaturated fat people are eating and then tracks their risk of coronary heart disease over, say, 10 years. And meta-analyses or studies which combine the results of these studies have pretty consistently found that saturated fat is not associated with coronary heart disease, but there's a little bit of debate on whether polyunsaturated fat is beneficial. Now, there's some reasons that we should be a bit skeptical of, of the results from observational studies, and that is because of confounding variables. So, for instance, people just don't randomly eat more or less saturated fat. Generally speaking, people eat less saturated fat because they are following the dietary guidelines because they are more health conscious in general. And you can see this. So this is one of these observational studies. And you can see that as saturated fat intake increases, so looking at quartile five versus, sorry, quintile five versus quintile one, that people are exercising less, more likely to smoke, and generally taking a generally, generally not taking a multivitamin. Now, I'm not saying that a multivitamin is good or bad, just that it's associated with health consciousness. Now, as a result, people who eat saturated fat actually have worse health outcomes in these observational studies. And this is quite similar to red meat. So when the next red meat is going to kill you study comes along, you know, the same lessons will apply to that as well. Now, observational studies adjust for some of those variables like the exercise and the smoking. And when they do this, the relationship between saturated fat and things like total mortality, which I have up here, that relationship tends to nothing. But does this adjustment always work? Because if it did, we could rely on observational studies a lot more. And there's a pretty large example of where this didn't really work out. And some of you might be familiar with this. So early observational studies, particularly, say, done in the 90s, suggested that 
Eating a low-fat diet would reduce your risk of cancer, and taking hormone replacement therapy would decrease your risk of coronary heart disease. The Women's Health Initiative, perhaps the largest clinical trial ever conducted, refuted both of those hypotheses. When people wanted to find out what happened, they looked back at some of the older, clinical, sorry, the older observational studies and found that a low-fat diet and hormone replacement therapy were associated with more healthy behaviours, more exercise, less smoking, better diet, that kind of thing. And that this was likely driving the beneficial outcomes seen in those studies. And this essentially is what's called the healthy user effect. Now, just to bring this back to saturated fat, this is an example from the observational study I just linked. It's quite interesting, I found, that saturated fat was very strongly associated with respiratory mortality or deaths from respiratory diseases. Think something like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And that this remains significant even after adjustment. Now, what's the plausible mechanism for this? Generally speaking, you won't find one. We've heard of the diet heart hypothesis, but we haven't heard of the diet lung hypothesis. And I'm wondering, perhaps this has got nothing to do with saturated fat, but it's an artifact of the increase in smoking, or perhaps something else that they didn't measure. So this brings me to the randomized controlled trials, which are considered the gold standard in nutrition and medicine. And the American Heart Association thinks that replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat will reduce your risk of coronary heart disease by 30%. But is that true? Let's have a closer look. Before we do, I think it's important to look at total mortality. Because if something decreases your risk of coronary heart disease but increases your risk of cancer, are you any better off? Probably not. There might be a few exceptions, but generally no. And with the four studies that they've selected here, I did my own little meta-analysis, and there is no effect for total mortality. So perhaps not too supportive of the American Heart Association. But there are also some issues with the core trials that the American Heart Association included. So the first one is by a guy called Dayton. It's also called the Los Angeles Veterans Administration Trial. And this was a really good trial. It had 800 people, went for eight years, was double blinded, which is really rare and hard to do, used adipose tissue biopsies to track adherence. Adherence was good because they were all bailed up in a domiciliary unit and given the meals. And it found a benefit for coronary heart disease, but not total mortality. Now, one of the issues with this study, and you've really got to sort of look into some of these trials to find it because it's not reported very often, is that vitamin E intake in the high saturated fat group was only 16% of the RDA and 9.4 times lower than the polyunsaturated fat group. Now, you would expect the high polyunsaturated fat group to have a higher intake of vitamin E because vegetable oils, for instance, are rich sources of vitamin E. But you wouldn't expect this kind of effect. And actually, if you look at how much vitamin E people were eating at that time, you would have expected an intake more along the lines of 9 to 10 milligrams. Now, given that the Los Angeles Veterans Administration trial found a benefit for coronary heart disease, and it has this issue with vitamin E, the question is, to what extent did the vitamin E contribute to that beneficial result? The second study is the Oslo Diet Heart Study. And it's a bit baffling how this one keeps on getting included in meta-analyses, because it involved a multifactorial diet intervention. So in addition to reducing animal fats and being asked to have half a litre of soybean oil per week, which is quite a lot, um, the high polyunsaturated fat group were also asked to reduce their intake of margarines and shortenings. Now, in the 1960s, when these trials are being done, they were quite major sources of trans fats. In addition, they were asked to eat more fish and seafood, to have more whole plant foods, to moderate sugar consumption, and were given sardines canned in cod liver oil. Now, this study found a consistent benefit for coronary heart disease and total mortality. Um, and so you just got to wonder, was that due to the saturated fat and the polyunsaturated fat, 
or was that due to the other dietary factors that they changed? The third study, the Medical Research Council trial, no particular major issues with this one. It was pretty neutral overall in its results, but I just wanted to use it to discuss that sometimes the methods used when we're talking about increasing or decreasing nutrients aren't always equal. So for instance, among their methods used to reduce the intake of saturated fat in the high polyunsaturated fat group, you would include methods that you guys might expect, such as reducing your intake of full fat milk and cutting the fat off the meat. But it also involved reducing common margarines, again, a major source of trans fats, and things like biscuits and cakes, which, you know, not quite equal to meat and milk, for instance. And the last one is the Finnish Mental Hospital study. And again, this is also baffling how this repeatedly gets included in meta-analyses of observational, sorry, meta-analyses of randomised control trials, because it's not even a randomised study. So this used a bit of a different method. It involved two hospitals that were each given, that were given a high saturated fat diet or a high polyunsaturated fat diet. And after six years, they reversed. So hospital A would have been on the high saturated fat diet first and then went on to the high polyunsaturated fat diet. Um, now this was quite large and noted quite a significant benefit for coronary heart disease, but no benefit for total mortality. Now, two major issues with this study is that the high saturated fat group received more of an antipsychotic cardiotoxic medication. Remember, this is done in a mental hospital. So, you know, it's not like this was a minor issue that only a handful of people experienced. And they also received more common margarine. And this was directly measured in the study. Now, the American Heart Association also excluded six other trials, including three major ones. So one of these is the diet and reinfarction trial, and its result was pretty neutral overall. And this was excluded because the, there was a change in carbohydrate intake. Now, when you look at the paper, the change in carbohydrate intake was 2% of total calories. So I don't know about you, but that doesn't seem like it's going to be particularly important. The next is the Minnesota Coronary Survey, and this was a bit of a negative slash neutral trial. And this was excluded because the median follow-up was less than two years. Even though the study planned to have a follow-up of five years, this was also done in a mental hospital and was happening at the time when patients were going back into communities. Now, I find this a bit interesting because the rationale the American Heart Association gives is that it takes a long time, years, for the fat composition of, the, of your adipose tissue to reflect the fat composition of the diet. So for instance, if saturated fat is about 40% of your fat intake, then it will form about 40% in your fat cells, composition-wise. The problem is, this isn't actually their mechanism. Um, the mechanism by which they think that saturated fat is bad and polyunsaturated fat is good is based on LDL cholesterol. Now here's the thing, LDL cholesterol in response to dietary change will change in about a few days to a week. And this is quite common among other metabolic parameters such as glucose, insulin and blood pressure. All of those change really, really quickly. And if you think about it, you could use this information to perhaps save a bit of money potentially. Um, so the next one is the Sydney Diet Heart Study. And you might have heard about this study in 2013, if you're following this kind of thing at the time. And it was quite a negative study. Um, and when some more results are published in 2013, a lot of the people in the conventional dietetic scene were saying, oh yes, but you know, this study is confounded because the high polyunsaturated fat group received more trans fats. The problem is that there's generally speaking not a lot of information published in these trials. So we don't really know if they receive more or less trans fat, and so whether or not this is an issue or not. But you know, the American Heart Association, they, they ignore this debate and this uncertainty, and they just say, the Sydney Diet Heart Study is bad 
because of trans fats. Sorry, the Sydney Diet Heart Studies show that trans fats are bad. Now, I wanted to say, because they're using epidemiological studies as a reference point for trans fats being bad, what about if I gave them the worst case scenario for trans fats? Um, you know, let's, just, let's say it was confounded by trans fats. Um, I then adjusted for the risk ratio in observation in epidemiological studies, and it's still a negative study. Um, I haven't got this here because it's a bit, you know, bit of detail, but you know, you can read about it on the blog, um, or you can ask me later. Um, so this brings me to my meta-analysis. Now, I, since I've discussed some of the issues with previous studies, and I was aware of these issues for quite some time, I wanted to look at these trials and look at, okay, so if we consider those trials that most accurately reflect replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat, what kind of result will I get? And to do this, I categorise trials as adequately controlled. So thinking here more along the lines of the Medical Research Council trial and inadequately controlled. So more like the Oslo Diet Heart Study with its multifactorial diet intervention. So just before I get started with the results, I think it might be of interest one of the results that you get from meta-analyses. And you can kind of see here with all the studies listed on the left-hand side and their results depicted on the right-hand side that there's quite a bit of variation in the results of these studies. So some of them suggest a benefit, some of them suggest a harm. And you can test for this statistically with something called the I-squared test, which I've highlighted there. And when an I-squared is above 50%, that's evidence of significant heterogeneity, or just a fancy way of saying that the studies are quite different from each other. And when something like this happens, it should really prompt people to go a bit deeper and go, well, what are the factors that are contributing to these differences? Another thing with the variation in these study results is that you can imagine how easy it can be for, say, someone to pick one or two of these studies, you know, put them on a website or a blog or an article, and use that to generate a narrative of how saturated fat is good or how saturated fat is bad without looking really at the whole evidence space. And you can see the media do this every time, you know, coffee is bad and then it's good and then it's bad. You know, it all comes from individual studies and not looking at the whole picture. So anyway, the results of my meta-analysis were essentially this, that in the adequately controlled trials, those that most accurately replace saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat, that there's no benefit for coronary heart disease, and that the benefit that you see in the American Heart Association report and in previous meta-analyses is entirely due to inadequately controlled trials, and you get a pretty similar result with four coronary heart disease mortality. And total mortality is a bit different, um, but again, like no real result there. And, and really no meta-analysis, unless you do it wrong, um, has been able to find a benefit for total mortality. So, for summary and implications, saturated fat is unlikely to increase the risk of coronary heart disease. You can get this from looking at blood lipids, you can get this from observational studies, you can get this from randomised control trials. Replacing saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat is unlikely to decrease the risk of coronary heart disease. In fact, because in the adequately controlled trials, they are still confounded by trans fats to a small degree, you could speculate that it might increase it. Be careful when drawing conclusions from risk factors such as LDL cholesterol and observational studies, because sometimes a randomized controlled trial might come along and might bust your hypothesis. And finally, that dietary guidelines and public health policy should focus on things that are more likely to be effective, such as sugar and highly processed food, rather than saturated fat and polyunsaturated fat. Thank you.